Welcome back to Channel Guys. Time to kick off the spring to another canoeing season with the annual spring trip. The wildlife are coming out of hibernation. The birds are flying back. The trout are hungry. The trees are budding. There's new growth all around us and on us, I guess you could say. Due to the extremely mild winter this year, the park's opening date was on April the 10th, which is two weeks earlier than last year's opening date of April the 23rd. According to record keeping over the last 60 years, this is much earlier than the latest spring opening of May the 15th, which is also the same year as the classic Canada versus Soviet Union Summit series of, you got it, 1972. That's how I remember the latest opening. If you add four more decades to 1972, you get the earliest opening, which was in 2012 on March the 29th. So even with this year's extremely warm winter, the opening date was still a couple weeks later than the earliest date on record. Feels good to be back out paddling again. And I got a seven day trip planned. I'm paddling my Swift Prospector 14 pack boat, and it's the perfect fit for me to cross off some of these portages so I can get a little bit deeper in the backcountry and fish some of these lakes that don't see as much pressure as the ones closer to Highway 60. Algonquin Park is home to one of the world's highest concentration of natural brook trout lakes, and I wouldn't mind hooking into some. Now, the last time we had a chance to be on the water was in September, and it sure is a long wait for me to come around. I've consolidated my white pack down to 41 pounds, my gray bag is down to 21 pounds, and Scout has her pack as well. The forecast for the next two days is looking pretty good. Sunny with high of 18, but after that, it looks like we're gonna be into a lot of rain. It's what you come to expect when you're traveling in May. Now, keeping up with annual tradition, each new spring trip starts off with adding a new sticker to the paddle. Joining up with Canoe Hound Adventures, Lost Lakes, Kevin Callan, Explore the Backcountry, and last year's inductee to the Paddle of Fame, Northern Scavenger, this year we have a true Canadian adventurer who's been pushing his limits in the backcountry for over a decade. Some of his crazy expeditions are documented following traditional canoe routes through extreme white water and traversing through the freezing Arctic. Whether he's traveling solo with a group, or with his family. Be prepared to be entertained by a true modern-day explorer who does it all. Any guesses? Jim Baird the Adventurer. A welcome addition to the paddle and his video library is full of outdoor content that's definitely worth watching. A rewarding subscription full of adventures where he shared some of his advanced level bushcraft skills. And I like to go around, around, back that way, then back and forth through the middle. But there's one remarkable skill that only the expert should attempt, and it's rightfully named after the adventurer himself. It's the- Jim Baird flip. Oh, Jim Baird flip. Wait. Well, ain't that easy. Apparently it's all in that. Jim's skill set definitely helps him get through some of these crazy trips, but then there's plenty of humor and lots of unpredictable hey, moments. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, freak out and kick the piss out of you. you gotta be on your toes like a ballerina. Dip, 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 dip. He wants direction towards the frying pan, good sir. You bear. Every shot in the. Anyways, um, that's not my seat. I lost my wedding ring. Beard adventurer. Eats porridge. Al Dante invented that way of cooking pasta, but uh, he, he actually beat his brother Steve Dante to it. A spot of tea, I don't mind if I do. Drying rack, rack, the drying rack. It's the exact size of my fireplace. I'm a loser. <laughs> my mouthful. That frown has been turned upside down on old Teddy. Because we're cold. Burr. The world is our sardine. I mean, oyster. Damn it, I always screw that up. Personally, my favorite trip was beyond the height of land. 25 days in the northern Manitoba wild. And it was just good watching it the second time around. That series with his brother Ted was a true expedition that allowed some of us weekend warriors to get a glimpse into a spectacular adventure. Whether it's bombing white water as big as Niagara Falls, visiting extreme remote locations, endless wildlife, trophy fishing, and the occasional accident. It can all be found in one of the most exciting channels to watch. His adrenaline rushing, heart stopping, type two fun highlight reel is too long to show here, so you have to head to his channel to check out all the awesome clips. I look forward to each new video and I'm happy to show my support for this year's new sticker to the paddle. And don't worry, your companion is always close by. Now that's gonna do it for this year's sticker reveal. And there's only one thing left to do. And if you're familiar with Jim Bear's videos, you know there's a catchphrase that he says all the time. And this is my chance to end with a Baird trademark. Yeah. Is that not allowed? Ugh. Not even one time? Okay, I'll leave it to the experts. Yeah. That's what I freaking live for. And that's how it's done. So I hope everyone is watching this channel so we can keep on pumping out some more videos and we can see what kind of adventures he comes up with next. And for us, now it's time for us to look for a campsite. Got everything set up. We had something to eat. Camp is right over there. 
We got about an hour and a half of sunlight left, but I think we're gonna head back, call it a day. We got a big day tomorrow, so let's get some good rest. We just got back to camp. Looks like it's turned out to a little bit of a pink sky out front. Fortunately, no luck in the fishing department, but it looks like we're gonna be going to sleep, listening to the spring peepers. Can you hear them? Yeah, see you tomorrow. Okay, we're off for day number two. Pretty good sleep last night. Looks like those spring peepers kept on going all night. They didn't these up. So we got a pretty big day ahead of us. We gotta go 16 and a half kilometers. So we need an early start. But lucky for us, the water is perfectly calm. We got excellent conditions. And we got to head across the lake to the first portage, which is straight ahead of us. Yesterday we didn't have much of a travel day. I've done many trips where you do a little bit too much on the first day and your body's just not ready for it. But now we got a lot to make up for day number two. 15, no, 16 and a half kilometers to get to our next scheduled campsite. But with water conditions like this, it should help out a lot, except we still have lots of weight and we got to be doing double portages. And that takes a lot of time and we have a lot of portages to do today. The conditions are excellent and it's going to be a fun paddle out here for, sure, for today. Okay, Steve. Okay. Okay. Good job. Here we go, first portage of the day, 900. The paddling's going easy, it's the portaging that's going to slow us down. So we got to double carry everything. Start off with the packs and then we'll head back for the canoe. See how this goes, but it's going to take a lot of time for all these extra portages. There's a rough grouse just up ahead. It's just its uh, little wings there to make that noise. Chicken of the woods. We got a big uphill. Start off this one. Oh, I think we made it to the top. At the top now. Hopefully everything is downhill from here. Yeah, a little easier for you. Easier for you, you just go under. All right, so we crossed off a 900 meter portage and an 1800 meter portage. And those were all double carried, so we gotta mark those numbers down times three. And now we just have a little stretch to paddle through here before we head into a 500 meter portage. It's a busy morning, I'm tired already. And after that, we got a nice stretch of paddling where I can stop and maybe we'll have some lunch or something like that. It's a busy morning. So far we got more distance on land than we do on the water. And then after that, we still have one, two, three, four, five smaller portages, all under 700 meters. Before we get to Big Trout Lake where we're staying for the night. It's a long stretch, it's gonna be a long day. But we got awesome conditions, not a cloud in the sky and no wind. And the bugs aren't here yet either, so that's another bonus. It's so time to keep on going and slowly knock off the rest of these portages. The king of cookie town, can't go wrong with a cookie, can you?
I wouldn't say the king, but definitely what we need. We need the calories. I had a treat for scope, but I forgot it in the bag. It's at the bottom of the bag. Just gonna have to wait till we get to the campsite. I screwed up. Sorry, scope. Haven't had much time to film. There's another person behind us, and I want to get to the fishing spot first. First one to throw the lines in is usually the winner. So we've been racing through these last little sections. We gotta get to that spot first. <laughs> we gotta get to that spot first. We don't know how long it hasn't been touched for. No time to film. We have about a 15 minute window before our guests come. Had one there, drag was too low, too loose. Let's get a couple casts over here. Nothing over there. No luck in my fishing spot. I've caught some there before, but nothing today. Didn't expect that. So up ahead, there's a campsite on my right, which I want to stay at because I'm beat. But Big Trail Lake is so calm right now paddle on a little bit more just to get a little further ahead. You never know what to expect on big trout. Could get pretty choppy at sometimes. It's a big lake. Gonna continue on a little bit longer. As you can see, we found a campsite, a huge campsite. It has plenty of place to put a tent pad. It has a beach and even the previous owners left a bunch of firewood, which would have been perfect if we caught a fish, but we know that didn't happen, so we had to rehydrate one of our own meals. Not as good as a fish, but it'll do. And after looking over the map, I wanted to see how much portage and we actually did. Turns out, walking those portage trails three times adds up to 13 kilometers. So it was a busy day. We're gonna rest good tonight, get a good sleep, so we can do it all again tomorrow. All right, good morning. Day number three. Let's go, Scout. We got a little bit of rain, but it's not too bad. We're gonna get something to eat and then we'll be back on the water, paddling all the way across Big Trout to the other side. See how it goes. Okay, we're off. We had two sunny and dry days to start off with and today looks like it's gonna be a rain out. We are getting poured on right now and we gotta make our way to the end of Big Trout. A waterproof map case. This is gonna get a test today, that's for sure. Let's see how that goes. This is gonna be a fun one. This is gonna be a wet one. Let's go, Scout. Okay, we got through most of the big trout. We weaved our way in and out through some of the islands. It got a little bit of windy at some parts, and uh, we tried to look for a campsite to let Scout out and run around but towards this uh, northeast part of the park, or well, maybe northwest. A lot of those campsites are taken, there's nowhere for us to stop. So we're gonna continue on to the portage and then we'll be able to get out there and run around a little bit and stretch our legs. Looks like this one needs a new portage sign. Looks like someone put up the yellow there, you can spot it from the distance, but I guess the old portage sign got ripped off. Time for a new one. We've got a lot of rainwater in there. New lake, same story. Rain only eased up for a second there. Now it's right back. <laughs> what a day. Oh, we got a little break in the weather. Stop in for a snack. Chocolate and peanut butter, nut butter. Scout. Popperette. Hey, Scout. I forgot yesterday. You got it? Hold it. Good job. Sorry about that. This GoPro keeps on cutting out on me. Take it, Scout. Go ahead. There we go. 
Now you can cut out. We caught one, guys. Look at that. It's a nice one. We caught one. This GoPro keeps on cutting out all the time. Big full fish. Nice catch. Look at the colors of those ones. I'm happy with that. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the video so far. As you can see here, we're approaching a rapid with a designated portage. I just want to make it clear that you should use caution around all moving water, and we didn't accidentally miss the portage. We've already scouted it. Now let's continue with the video.
it rained on us hard out there and we got soaked today. We managed to get a campsite. We got Tarp City set up and go figure, it stops raining now. Tarps aren't perfect, but they'll do the job. It was a good day out there. We finally got our brook trout dinner. Been waiting for this all year. You too? Take it, Scout. Tell me what it's like. Can't wait. I've already had some. Brook trout, rice, and hot sauce. My favorite meal. I had it last year, and I couldn't wait to get back and get another one. This trip is a, a success. We got our brook trout dinner. That's going to be it for today. We're going to clean up. We'll see you tomorrow. Maybe we can do it again. Good stuff. Morning, day number four. So if you've been following along, I'm on a mission to try and catch a fish on the fly rod. So that's what we're gonna try and do right now. Let's go find a spot. We got one. First one on the fly. Little brook trout. Nice. There he goes. Perfect. Mission complete. Try this again. I don't know what you call this, but that's what I put on. Well, I think that's gonna do it. We came what we accomplished for. We caught our first brook trout on the fly. Now we're gonna move on. We got a little bit of paddling to do. We had a few tangles in between. <laughs> Portage has a little bit of incline to it. No problem for Scout if your back's too light. Lots of white perch in this area. We'll save it for later. Let's go. Easy Scout. Okay, it's good. Rocky downhill coming up. Thanks. 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 Portaging done for today. We're on the lake that we reserved. And I know when I made my reservation, all the sites on this lake are reserved for tonight. So we have to go see what we can get. There's a couple campsites in particular that I like. And I want to go see if anyone's on them or not. Also, this lake can get pretty choppy sometimes. The wind can really whip through here. But today, we're really lucking out. Hopefully the same with the campsite. Also, when I made my booking, there's seven eligible reservation sites, but only five are eligible to be booked. I guess there's two emergency sites just in case anyone gets into trouble. It is protected and calm in this little bay, but the wind usually goes east to west on this lake. So once we get around this corner, we'll see what it's like. It's looking okay from here, but we'll go see.
All right, we got one of the campsites I was looking to get. No one was on it. A rather light travel day today, but that sets us up for good position tomorrow to do some fishing. And all that's left to do now is to get something to eat. Scout, get your bowl. Good job. Good job, Scout. Food for Scout. Take it, Scout. Take it, Scout. And a rehydrated pasta for me. We're gonna eat these, and that's gonna be it for today. See you tomorrow. Take it, Scout. Okay, getting ready for first cast with the fly rod. Here we go. Starting off with the same thing as last time. See what we can do. Oh. One went for it there. He went for that right away. Let's try this one. Oh, Jesus, you gotta be quick with these things. They're going for it. There we go. There we go. He's either caught or he's pretty big, or just lots of flexibility on this rod. No, he's not very big, but it's the current as well. We got one. This line is so light. I'm afraid it's gonna break. Ah, we got one. There we go. Look at that. You see? Perfect. We're gonna. Oh, there goes the net. There goes the net. Good thing it's floating. Oh, saved it. <laughs> That's a good spot right there. That's a good spot. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Look at that one. Can you see? Nice. We'll let him go. We'll try again for another one. There you go, buddy. There you go. Take the fly. Yep. Oh, no. I let the tension go. Ah. Trying to get the hang of this. You still there? He's still there. Oh, look at that. I thought I got snagged there for a second. He's still there. I like this white one. Okay, just in case I run, my luck runs out. We got two little ones here for a snack. We're about to get a major tangle. Yeah, tangle is coming. Tangles are real. There we go. Tangles are real. Whoa. <laughs> No, just uh, come right back at me. <laughs> Jeez, hooked myself almost. Okay, seems to calm down now. We're gonna switch over to the spinner this time. Oh, that freaking fish tried to jump for it right there when I was gonna call it quits. 
<laughs> I did it again. Jeez, your mouth eye coordination's not very good. He's jumping right out of the water. Right there. He missed it two times. Oh, Jesus. Holy cow, he's aggressive. That was a bite. That was a bite. That is a snag. Interesting. Nothing on the spinning rod. Just a fly. There we go. Now we got something. Oh no. He was much better. He was better than the ones I caught before. Here's a nicer one, I think. A nicer one. That's a nicer one. Okay, that's it. Good job. Let's go. We got it. Good job. Three fish, all cleaned up, ready for lunch. That seagull is looking for my fish. Don't touch my fish. You got it. Today was a good day. We got up early and did a little fishing. Went to one of my fishing hot spots and it paid off. And the fly actually outfished the spinner. So we we're lucky enough to catch a few brook trout. I got one for Scout and a few for me. Here you go, Scout. Dig it, Scout. Brook trout for lunch. And the good thing about today is that today was only a sit up day to go fishing. We don't actually have to travel today. We're here for one more night. So the rest of the afternoon, just gonna be a little R&R. &R. Catch up with you later. Brook trout time. Where are you? There you are. Yeah, it's a pretty nice day out there. Would have been nice for paddling. I haven't seen anybody go by, but we're just hanging out here. Been uh, organizing the campsite a little bit. It was kind of a mess. Put some firewood down there for the next people. And there's a whole tree all over the place, so I just moved all the debris over to the side there for whoever comes next. But yeah, it's perfect for paddling out there. I hope people are enjoying the day, that's for sure. Mirror Lake, Glass Lake, dead calm. What a day. What a day for paddling. And we took it off. <laughs> Turned out to be a pretty good day. We got some fish in the morning. We cooked them up for lunch. Did a little bit of campsite cleanup for the next campers. Was able to get some rest in the tent. And there hasn't been a slight bit of breeze all day, which would be a problem if the bugs were really bad. But the bugs seem to be just coming out now. It would be perfect paddling conditions and I haven't seen any paddlers at all. So it looks like all that's left to do now is to get something to eat for dinner. Let's go get your bowl. Come over here. Get your bowl. Good job. Good job. Scout. Take it, Scout. We're going to have dinner now, and I think that's going to be it for the evening. And we'll be up, be up bright and early tomorrow because we've got a busy day tomorrow. Lots more portaging, and it's going to be a long day. So we'll see you tomorrow.
morning, day number six, and the calm waters have carried over from yesterday and we have gorgeous pattern conditions. But unfortunately, we won't be able to enjoy it as much as we like because we have more portaging to do than paddling. As just like before, if we have to walk the portage trails three times, we're going to have up to 12 kilometers of portaging. So we're off and out for an early start to get a good jump on the day and hopefully we can get to our campsite within a reasonable time. That rest day was definitely appreciated as my body was certainly feeling the after effects from the portages on earlier on in the trip. Look at that. The sun has just peeked over the trees. It's going to be a good day. So we're starting off with a 1600 meter portage into a small lake, then a 1500 meter portage into a small lake, then a 400 meter portage into an even smaller lake, and then an 1100 meter portage into a bigger lake. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. And it starts now, this first portage is right there. Okay, first portage done. Got that one out of the way. And now while we take a little breather here, just let me show you how I set up my canoe for portaging. So I've switched from the gear ties, which I was using before. And now I switched to these uh, elastic, ball and loops a little quicker snap them on like that nice and quick compared to the gear ties which you have to keep on twisting like that i just find the elastic ball is a little more efficient and quick when you come to portages these are just stored on here real quick also it's good to have some kind of string i just have two dog leashes hooked together and these are just to keep the bow end down when you need it my canoe has the the optional foot bar instead of the foot pegs so now this bar i have my fly rod here attached and same thing i have the ball end so i can just take it off quickly and easily and that stays in there nice and locked and then my fishing rod comes in here as well quickly with the ball end tie that locks that one in there paddle just goes underneath underneath the adjustable seat I can take it out real quick and it's a adjustable paddle so I can keep it at the length that I use I don't have to keep on shortening it and widening it it fits right down in there and then and that locks that in for portaging Thermarest stay outdoors seat with another ball end tie that locks that in there map goes right in there locks that in nicely and doesn't come loose and underneath the seat I have my net my net stays underneath the seat and then also right underneath the seat I put a kayak storage bag which I can put a few things in there and also this seat adds a little bit of uh, lower back support as well. North water safety package right there. We have a mat for Scout. And this is just a Velcroed in there. That can stay in there for the whole trip, but when it comes to load on the car, I can just take that off. That Velcro is just glued in there. On the side of the boat, I have the fish measuring tape, which kind of gets ripped off a little bit from the paddle or going on top of the car. And that's about it and then scouts sleeping pads which are nice and light i just wrap them around here it's nice and light but you can't get too bulky or the top of the backpack is going to hit onto that so you have to you have to keep your backpack nice and uh, low and then also for my camera gear i like to use these clamps and usually i'll put one here and the other one there and then for my fishing rod rod right there for when i'm trolling that's how i set everything up and now we got this small lake to cross and we get to do this all over again and load up the canoe and tie everything down again. You get lots of practice on these portages. Slowly but surely we're getting through these portages. Take a long time. Looks like a rain shower just caught up with us right now. Hopefully it doesn't last too long. <laughs> Hopefully not like day number two or three where it rained all day. Looking forward to getting to camp. These portages are kicking my butt. <laughs> I'm tired. Taking a break, Scout. Three down, one to go. We're getting there. Time for a snack. We are taking a break. A well-deserved break. 
one more to go 1000 meters nine kilometers crest off i'm beat I'm moving like a turtle now there you go you got it. all that snack for you and some gorp for me take it scout good job one more to go i can see it right across there 200 meters across a small lake pond and that's the next one and then we're on to our campsite lake so far we haven't seen any people yesterday or today which is a good thing but i think when we get to the next lake we'll start to see some more people we're getting close closer to the access point See you on the other side. Finally, we're here. Load one complete. Back to get the pack. All right, portaging done for today. Not much footage. Otherwise, it'd be a hiking channel. This is the lake we're camping on, so let's go find a campsite. I'm beat, scouts beat. Get a campsite, gets it up, get something to eat. See you when we get there. Well, we found a campsite. We got camp set up and we got dinner just in time because now it started to rain. So I think that's gonna be it for today and we'll see you tomorrow. We only have a little more paddling to go, so it looks like that's gonna wrap up another spring trip. We succeeded in finding some native Algonquin brook trout, and we were able to put together a few delicious meals. The weather cooperated for the most part, except for one rainy day. We stayed on some nice campsites, and the paddling conditions were phenomenal. The wind never showed up. The wildlife wasn't as visible as in previous years, but I'm sure they were all around us. I struggled on a few portages, and finally caught a fish on the fly rod. So I hope you like watching the video. Once again, I'm Jay, that's Scout, the channel's Jay's way. Remind you to get outside and explore, and we'll see you in the next one.